Hello everyone, welcome to KJB Believers, and today we're going to be talking about uh, talking about a subject here in the Bible, and what is one in the Bible? What is one in the Bible? Now, one thing we need to understand is that in our modern language, in our modern way how we use that word, to the common person, uh, the, what the image that's going to bring up in their head is alcohol, alcoholic wine, right? Fermented wine, that is usually the image that's brought up in our minds, right? Because we're beings of habit, and usually we grew up, you know, uh, for example, me, I grew up Roman Catholic. So basically, um, sometimes, you know, my mom used to have wine, you know, uh, a fermented wine. Same thing with my family, etc., when gatherings. Because I grew up Roman Catholic, and that's, you know, what we used to do, and so forth. So yeah, and I always thought in my mind, wow, you know, so that's what wine is, you know. So whenever I encountered a passage, like in John 3... I would always think, okay, yeah, Jesus made fermented wine. Of course, of course, you know, it made sense. Because I never studied the issue long. I just took a quick glance like a John 3 and justified it real quick, you know, without doing any cross-references or research on it. So, for a long time, I was like that. But it wasn't until I learned how to do proper cross-references, that's how you study your Bible, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, as 1 Corinthians. So, once you start comparing spiritual things to spiritual, you start to see that God defines his words differently than we do. For example, meat. Meat in the Bible. Now, I grew up, we either had rice and beans and meat, right? That's And meat is, you know, what, steak, chicken? That is what we consider meat, right? And of course, you're sitting there thinking, yeah, that's what meat is. But here's the thing, in the Bible, in Genesis, meat is also considered something that is edible. It can be vegetables also. Salads, that is meat according to the Bible. Uh, uh, fr uh, the fruit-bearing seed, seed that bears fruit, that's considered meat also in the Bible. And you clearly see that in the scriptures, in the King James Bible. So you see that not all the time when we think of a word, God uses the same definition. Because again, we're, we're fallible beings. And if we have a preconceived notion on what the Bible says, we're going to get messed up. All the time you're going to get messed up. That's why you got to humble yourself before a holy God. The Bible says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So God's ways, as the Bible says, are always higher than our ways. That's just how God works. Okay? And wine, the word wine in the Bible, God defines it in a very, uh, I guess, to the natural mind, a very peculiar way. Now the Bible says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, for they're spiritually discerned. So this is going to be foolish to you if you're not someone who's spiritually discerned. Now, by what spirit? Now, if you go ahead and use a new translation, for example, uh, for ex I'll give you a good example. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 6, My words, they are spirit and they are life. You see, because there's all types of spirits out there. There is the spirit of devils, and there is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, right? You are going to get messed up if you go around reading the breathed out words of the devil in the new translations. You're going to get messed up, and you're not going to get it, all right? The Holy Spirit of God is not going to fellowship with devils, with the spirit of devils. That's precisely what's, what's going to happen. He can't fellowship with that. Only the Holy Spirit of God can fellowship with the words of Jesus Christ which is the King James Bible. This is the preserved Word of God, the King James Bible. A translation, if you will. You can see my previous video on that, a translation. The, the King James Bible is a translation. But either way, now, how does the Bible define wine? Now, let's turn here. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 8. Notice how it's defined. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster... And one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do it for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. Notice, the new wine is found in the cluster. That is the cluster of the grapes. So while the grapes are there, and the juice is in the grapes, it calls it wine. Read it again. As the new wine is found in the cluster. Now that is non-alcoholic wine. So grape juice... Is technically wine in the Bible. And now you might say, well, that's a huge stretch. No, it's not. This was a practice that people used to do even back in Bible times. In fact, uh, in Genesis chapter 40, verse 10, I think it was uh, 
concerning um uh, one of uh one of Pharaoh's uh ex butlers, if you will, the chief butler, who told his dream to Joseph. Notice what he says, verse ten. And in the vine there were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossom shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth oh sorry, brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Alright, so notice, notice what he did. He took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. That's wine. You see, wine is something that back then was a luxury. Because it was a luxury alone that you had grapes, but it was even a more luxury if you only used the juice of the grapes. Because grapes are, wow, that was considered something like, wow, you must be really rich. You have a vineyard, you know, that was considered wealth back then. You see, because wealth, how we think of wealth now, we think of cash, money, right? Dollars, coins, but wealth in the Bible considered cattle, weight, vineyard, big house. That's what's considered wealth in the Bible. All right, gold, silver, that's wealth. You see, because again, even with that word wealth, when we think of wealth or riches, we think of cash, paper. That's what we think of. But no, in the, in the Bible, that's weight and cattle and your house and vineyards, etc. That's what's considered wealth. So you got to be careful on how you define your words in the Bible. See how it's used in the Bible. Study that out. Meditate on those things. So notice it's not a foreign concept that wine, oh, that wine is, is something that's squeezed out of the grape into someone's cup. That's not a foreign concept whatsoever. All right. Let's turn here. And Genesis I think it's chapter 49. Notice. This is talking about Judah. This is a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter, that's what a king uses. Nor a lawgiver uh, from between his feet until Shiloh come. And, to, uh, and, uh, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foal unto the vine. And the ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and in his clothes in the blood of the grapes. So notice, he washes himself with uh, while he, he's, he's uh, binded to the vine, to the choice vine, right? A vine. And he washed his garments with wine and the clothes in the blood of grapes, right? The blood of grapes. That's what the Bible says, the blood of grapes. So notice... Uh, in the Bible, uh, the the what was it? The blood of grapes. There was a reference on that I wanted to take you to. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, but I'll take you to there later. But either way, notice that it's called the blood of grapes. When you squeeze the juice out of the grape, it looks like blood, if you will. All right. So that's what's also equated with wine here. All right. Let's see another thing here in Judges chapter nine. All these references I'm showing you is non-alcoholic wine. Non-alcoholic wine. So here there's a there's a story being told here on trees, you know, saying come rule over us and etc. And judges. And notice what the vine tree said. The vine tree said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Notice what it said. Notice what the vine said. The vine said, should I leave my wine? Now, if wine only means fermentation, fermentation does not happen within the within the vine. All right. For that's that's not when it happens. He says, should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man? So notice while the juice is within the grapes and in the vine, it's called wine. And notice what it said, which cheereth God and man. There's another verse and I, I forgot which book it was, which talks about. That wine makes uh, the uh, the heart uh, of man glad, right? And a lot of drunkards like to go there. Oh, you see, when you're drunk, you, your heart is glad. Uh, no. Compare scripture with scripture. It's within the vine here. It's when it's found in the cluster. Because wine in and of itself, grape juice, brings brings cheer to a person, right? It tastes good. I like, I like grape juice too, you know? So it's something that tastes good. It's a luxury. And it brings joy. It cheereth God and man. So that's what the Bible has to say on it. Now let's turn to the passages that talk about alcoholic wine. All right, there's a difference 
between uh, unfermented wine and alcoholic wine. Huge difference. Something you need to keep notice. Take notice right away. Because if you don't, then you're going to make the Bible to contradict itself. So here we see, let's turn to a verse here which ends up talking about alcoholic wine. Alright, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Notice what it says. Wine is a mocker. Okay, it's just talking about fermented or unfermented. Let's keep reading. Strong drink is raging. Ah, okay. So this is in context of strong drink. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So if you say that it's good to drink fermented wine, if you think that's fine, that that's okay, the Bible says you're not wise. If you're deceived thinking that this is okay, then you're not wise. That's what the Bible says. You're not a wise person. Because it always brings sadness all the time. It always brings tragedy. Proverbs 23, verses 29 to 31. Verses 29 to 31. Notice. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Notice, this is who is the type of person who likes to get drunk? Someone who is probably feeling sorry about something? Some, someone who has something laid within their heart? Maybe, maybe a, a tragedy happened? Who have contentions? Who has babbling? Who speaks weird? You know, so forth. Who hath wounds without a cause? When that person wakes up, You'll notice, oh, wow, I have a bruise here, I have a bruise here. What happened? Who hath wounds without a cause? That's what alcohol does. Who hath redness of eyes? Oh, they that tarry long at the wine, that go to seek mixed wine. Look not upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in a cup, when it moveth itself aright. You see, that's the fermentation process. That's when it moveth itself aright. Notice, notice what the Bible tells you. Look not thou upon the wine. Don't look at that. You see, the society we live in wants us to sin. That's why there's so many commercials of beer and alcohol and wine. So many commercials you see on TV to cause us to sin. Because the Bible says you're not even supposed to look at it. You, you're, don't even drink it. Don't drink it, but also don't look at it. Look not upon the wine when it is red. When it move it's itself all right. Because what happens? At last it biteth like a serpent. And it stinketh like an adder. adder. Notice. That it's not something you should be doing. Not something you should be doing at all. Habakkuk. Let's turn to Habakkuk. In this quick Bible study here. Habakkuk. Oh, where is Habakkuk here? Okay, Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 15. Now, I want to make a statement in the New Testament. When it comes to diseases, right? Let's say you have a stomach problem or you, you, you can't sleep, etc. Or what, whatever infirmity it may be, sometimes alcoholic wine is needed. Sometimes. All right. So in the context of these things, it's talking about recreational drinking. Recreational. All right, but when it comes to, you know, medicine, then it, it is okay. For example, NyQuil. NyQuil, for example, that has alcohol, you know, but as long as you use it to tend to your infirmity. I want to make that statement very clear. So as long as you're not using it, hey, you know, just to drink it for recreational, uh, recreational speaking, you know, you're fine. All right, so it depends on the circumstance. But if you're using it just to like, oh, drink a little bit, enjoy, you know, enjoy, it, you know, that's when it's wrong. Because you're drinking it for recreational, rec and, uh, recreational speaking. And when it comes to drunkenness, all it takes, it always starts with one drink when it comes to drunkenness. All right. And I remember, um, uh, you know, since I grew up Roman Catholic, sometimes, you know, my family, you know, they would have too much. They would say, oh, I'm only going to have a little bit. And they always end up having too much all the time. You know, sometimes, you know, so so why why tempt the devil? Why tempt the devil? Abstain from that, you know. The Bible says don't even touch it. Don't go to it. Notice what the Bible says. Habakkuk 2.15 Woe unto him that givest his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, that makest him drunken also, that thou mayst look on their nakedness. So, if the Lord Jesus Christ in John, 3, 6, and, and John chapter 2 made alcoholic wine, he would have sinned. 
because the, the wine already ran out. They already had wine in their system. Now, it could be alcoholic wine or non-alcoholic wine. I see non-alcoholic wine there because the Lord Jesus is not going to surround himself in a, in a sinful circumstance. And the Lord Jesus is not going to make nobody drunk also because he created what? What was it? Six water pots of stone. That's enough to make a whole army drunk. <laughs> That's enough to make a whole army drunk. The Lord Jesus is not going to do that because if he did do that, then his sacrifice would be in vain. He would have sinned. According to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15, he would have given his neighbor the bottle. Yeah, abstain from that. Don't ever do that. Let me turn here. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 22. Notice what the Bible says. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. Oh, you think it's all right to drink wine? You think it's fine to drink fermented wine? You think that's okay? You think that's fine? The Bible says, Woe unto them that are mighty to do that. And men of strength to mingle strong drink. Alright, woe unto them. If you think that's fine, my friend, you're sadly mistaken. You're sadly mistaken, my friend. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7. Isaiah 28, verse 7. Notice. I'm going to start with uh, verse 5. In, the, in that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory, for a diadem of beauty, unto the residue of the people, and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also have erred through wine, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through dr strong drink. They err in vision, and they stumble in judgment. You see, the reason why you might say, well, drinking wine is fine. You see, you're stumbling in judgment. Why? Because you have erred, my friend. You are in error. There's nothing good that comes from fermented wine. Strong drink, if you will. That's what strong drink is. They err in vision. You will make a mistake. You'll always make errors, when you're, when, not only when you're drunk, but also when you, when you entertain alcohol as well. All right? Now for our final verse here, in Deuteronomy 32, we're going to look at something. Because in, this, is a, this is a type. Where was it? Uh, okay. So the Lord Jesus is talking about Israel here. Uh, basically, notice what he talks about Israel. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 14. Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of breed of Bashan and goats with fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Okay, so notice, this is what they drink. Pure blood of the grape. It's pure. It's not corrupt. That's what fermentation is. Pure blood of the grape. That's what grape looks like. It looks like blood, right? And he calls it the blood of the grape. Because that's what it is. That is what you would consider unfermented wine. Grape juice, if you will. But notice, now you might say, well, this is propaganda. Well, the Lord Jesus, uh, the God himself paints it as such. Because the heathens, however, they have a different rock and they got a different wine. Notice the comparison here. Verse 4, talking about Israel. He is the rock, the Lord. He is the rock. The work is perfect for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity and just right is he. You know, and so forth. Remember the days of old, you know, so forth. So he's the rock. And he caused us to drink the pure blood of the grape. All right. So it's glorifying God. Everything on that aspect, it's glorifying God. But let's see on the pagans. Let's see how God pictures the pag pagans. Notice what he talks about them. Notice what he says. For their rock is not as our rock. You see, because there's two rocks out there. There's two of them. There is a Lord Jesus Christ and a counterfeit rock. If the rock you have is not the Lord Jesus Christ, then it's a counterfeit rock. That's one thing I'll say. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom. In the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Verse 33. Their wine is the poison of dragons. And the cruel venom of asps. Notice. It's 
related to venom of asps. It biteth like an adder, remember? That's what the Bible said concerning alcoholic wine. This is without a doubt al alcoholic wine right here. Their wine is the poison of dragons. Now, what is the devil? He is a dragon, Leviathan, the serpent. Alcohol is the poison of the dragon, the devil himself, who has corrupted houses, corrupted families with this substance. All right. So there's two wines in the Bible. There's the pure wine, the pure blood of the grape. And then there's the corrupted one, the poison of dragons. Which one will you drink of? Your choice is yours, my friend. I'm not here to tell you I can't I can't visit your house and watch, you know, through your window what you're doing, what you're not doing, but but then again, God is. God knows what you're doing. So at the very end of the day, are you gonna abstain from drinking the poison of dragons? Or not? The choice is yours, my friend. When the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was uh doing the the final supper, the Lord's Supper, if you will, the Bible says that he used the fruit of the vine. I will no more drink of this fruit of the vine till I come again in my father's kingdom. Now, according to the Bible, what is the fruit of the vine? Wine, which is found in the cluster. Grape juice. That's what you should be using in the Lord's Supper. Now, if you're using the poison of asps, according to the Bible, that's a real shame. Because the, because the, the wine is a type of his blood. Did Jesus Christ have corrupt blood or pure blood? Think about it. What kind of blood did he have? Was it laden with sin or was it not? You're going to have to decide on that, my friend. This is KJB Believers, Brother Fabrel here, and I'll be catching you guys in the next time. Peace.